Um, I wouldn't say we targeted it, but it was it, it was something that we wanted to make sure that we were an area we wanted to make sure we were very good at. And um, you know, I think Peter Omahani particularly, um, but Rory Best got pressure on in there. Gordon Darcy, uh, I thought Brian O'Driscoll got a great uh, got a great poach at one stage. Um, unfortunately, he was penalised for, but he got great position, and so um, you know. There were, there were aspects of it that we were really happy with, and um, I think there are aspects of it we're a little bit lucky with, for the exact reason you say, Des, is that um, you know Sam Warburton hasn't had a lot of game time, nor is uh, Dan Lydiot, uh, nor is Gittin Jenkins, who's superb over the ball normally. So there's a number of guys who who were maybe a little bit short of match fitness. Well, just sort of playing to put back backwards together and just around against that rush. Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, to have two home wins, uh, two two games into the championship is brilliant. Um, margin of victory in both games is, is fantastic. I think one of the big things Joe spoke about was the amount of one uh, one score games in the last championship and um, just how little bits of discipline and inaccuracy can put you the right side or the wrong side of a one score game. So that's what we've been one of the things we've been focusing on a lot. So. To get two wins with the the margin we've had is 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 brilliant. Um, uh, you know, I think there'll be a lot of things to work on certainly, but a lot of really good things as well that that will satisfy a lot of the players and the coaches. Well, um, Welsh lads were down a lot about the power of Ireland's ball. They said they've done a lot of work during the week on right out defence, but evidently it didn't work out too well. But did you feel it was a, a real go-to area for you to win? Um, I think in the conditions, Maul was always going to play a big part in the game. Um, and I think then once we got a lead, uh, it became a very potent weapon for us. And as, as the ball got wetter and wetter, it became a more potent weapon. It's a great way to, to hold on to the ball and put a team under pressure, um, particularly when you have when you have a lead. Um, you know, I think the prov all the provinces Maul very well. Um, and you come into camp and there's, there's a lot of ideas, a good mixture of ideas, which... Uh, which helped that add that to, to John Plumtree and um, Anthony would have had a few ideas as well in week one when he was here at the Wolfhound. So, um, you know, line out wise, I think we've we've you know very good jumpers, certainly uh, four excellent jumpers, and uh, I think we were able to concentrate on quite a small menu because Wales generally don't give you many line outs, so uh, it can focus the minds a little bit, and you have, you have a smaller menu and you. you Probably get better at a, at a shorter number of lineouts, which was probably a good thing for us and for our lineout. Um, you know, when we wanted to deliver it off the top and when we wanted them all. Joe, down two, he seemed in a bit of trouble when he went off. What's the story there? Yeah, I think I think Dan has uh, fractured his forearm, and uh, he will see a specialist, and um, we'll have more news on that early next week. But uh, he, uh, we'd be pretty sure that that forearm is fractured. And are there any other? No, no. Uh, again, it was really unfortunate for Dan. He played very well last week. Uh, we had a lot of confidence putting him on with 30 minutes to go. Um, and it was really his first action that uh, that it happened at. So, so disappointing for Dan. No, uh, it was seriously... The forecast today was uh, awful, and uh, we felt that if, if there was an area we could be accurate at uh, in the mall and, um, and be nice and tight, they would have to work fairly hard, and uh, we, would, we wouldn't put the ball at risk, um, and that worked out well for us. So you know, when we, we turned up, we, we preconceived a few tactics uh, on the basis of a weather forecast that didn't eventuate, and we just... Uh, just decided to stick with the tactics that we had. Joe, what was your thinking behind taking Paul and Michael for 54 minutes? And after you finished Paul, how did you feel at that point in time? Um, my thinking was he, he was starting to get a bit tired. <laughs> and um, and uh, how do you feel? <laughs> uh, I was struggling a little bit. Um, um, still a bit sick, so uh, you know I was uh, disappointed to come off. Um, but I was struggling a little bit and uh, you know I think um, 
had my hands in my head a few times, bent over a few times, and uh, you know that's just not acceptable. I was just just wary that Dan was in a very good place. As I said during the week, I played against him a few times, and uh, I just think he was in a good position to make an impact when he came on. And uh, since I was struggling a little bit, um, you know, it was a good, a good, good call. Hopefully, with another week now, I'll be in good shape next week. To be honest, um, I, I'm not going to think too far ahead. Um, we're going to get together uh, in Clonmel for, for a couple of days, Wednesday, Thursday, with the, the core of the squad and uh, try to just review a bit of what we've done in the first two weeks and try to, to plot some sort of course going, going forward to Twickenham. That's obviously a massive game. Um, and I think they were very unlucky last week uh, for the fact of Uge being an outstanding player getting the French uh, an early lead, and then on top of that, the French uh, with Gail Ficou at the end. Um, they were resilient, the French, but the English dominated long periods of that game, and I've no doubt that, uh, that they will be incredibly tough to beat at Twickenham. Winning at Twickenham is massive. It doesn't matter how many times they've done it before. Um, particularly at the moment, I think England, obviously, would be disappointed with the French game, but as Joe said, they dominated long parts of that game to go to Paris and to go through two tries to nil down and to come back and be whatever it was, five points ahead is, 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 is really impressive and I think they'd be disappointed with the finish so uh, they're an incredibly physical side um, you know, obviously work with Andy Farrell in the, in the summer on the lines, they have brilliant line speed um, you know, they really do put teams under pressure and force them to make mistakes with their line speed um, and I think they're growing in confidence all the time. So it's going to be incredibly difficult for us. I think if when we saw the fixture list, even though the second game was against the champions of the competition, I think you know all of us in the back of our mind, you know, would have been thinking we'd be in a very good place if we were two from two with two home games. But I think the competition now gets a whole lot harder when you go to Twickenham, and um, it's going to be a big step up. We were well beaten by a better team today, no excuses. Um, you know, very disappointing display and performance by us, but uh, take the hat, hat off to Ireland. I thought they played exceptionally well. At the end of the day, they dominated us up front, and that was the difference between the two teams. I thought they uh, mauled very well, competed harder, the breakdown made it difficult. Um, and you know, so that was a difference <coughs> between the two sides.